And there we go again. It's game number two of the best of three semifinals. T8 versus TCN. We're at Hafla TV. With me coming is Coucher, and I'm Hafla Moke myself. I really hope you enjoy the cast. Stay with us. This is the best of three, as I said already. And I just hope we look at three games because TCN looked like they have a chance, but TA definitely coming out with the better trades, but the better team fights in the early game and then they just took all that advantage even later and then, then just finish it off. The GG came even out before the first Rex was uh, down so TCN well aware of the fact that Total Aggression had this advantage up and they were like okay you know scrub this we just go for game number two and here we are let's hop into the draft. Yeah the first game like you said was pretty damn amazing I'm hoping for at least as an exciting game number two so the draft actually starts really similar to the first one, although last time TCN banned out the Visage, but Total Aggression taking it out themselves now. So are they baiting out the Invoker ban by pick rather for themselves, or are they gonna ban it out after all? I don't know, like I mean the Invoker did quite some impact the last game, but then overall if I like think about it, how much of these Invoker initiations, Tornado, EMP, etc. worked out quite well in the team fights, I don't know, like, it wasn't the strongest invoker after all, I mean, like, impact-wise on the game, so, I'd say, yeah. like, you, you could still leave it in total aggression, I don't know, maybe they go for it again, I mean, as in, picking it up this time first, now that they have the first pick. Yeah, they might go for it, but, I don't know, I, I haven't seen it from them, so... Yeah, so far they they never did, so it would be something new. Yeah, I mean, I guess they have to go for it. It's like the first pick, what of the previous lineup would you otherwise go as the first pick? Maybe the puck, I guess, but eh. Well, Although I'm maybe they want the bat rider instead of the invoker, I'm not too sure. I don't care about anything. Like, if you want to, you can go for, for whatever you want. I just want to see Axe again. Turtle Aggression utilizing this hero so well. Like these dunks coming out, it's just hilarious to watch. Like we almost saw a, a quadruple dunk in the last fight there. It was pretty amazing. Like the entire setup was just made to bring something low, X calling it, and then just dunking through. It's it's pretty amazing to be honest. Yeah, it definitely is. But auto aggression, it looks like they're kind of clueless about their first pick. They're like, uh. Invoker? No, man. We don't want that hero. He's too slow for us. We want something more <laughs> more aggressive. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they take oh, like 40 seconds already of the overtime, and it really looks like they are better in answering the draft than first picking it. Invoker. And they go for the Invoker. Yeah, it took quite some discussion, obviously, if they go for it or not, but this time we see the Invoker on the other side. Yeah, and TCN, that leaves them up for the Batrider, the Shadow Shaman, or the Nyx Assassin, like any of those heroes, or maybe even the Naga Siren could also be possible. So Nyx is the first pick and will it be the Shadow Shaman as the second, but I'm guessing Batrider. Yep, Batrider, Nyx would be bad. Not bad, but the Nyx, I don't know, last game... It didn't work quite out, like, it, sometimes he had some nice Vendetta opening, but if you look at the entire game, like, he barely had the chance to pick <laughs> something up, because Total Aggression, once they have an advantage, they answer really fast, all of them TP, you never see, like, just a two-man gank team whatsoever, like, if TA goes aggressive, you're gonna see the entire team <laughs> pretty much following up there, so, you have to deal with something that is, I don't know, like, if I was TCN, I would go for something that really dishes out a lot of AoE damage because so far the team fights they were all clumped up maybe that's the answer against total aggression aggression <laughs> yeah it might be so and they don't know what to go for themselves either just digging into the bonus time waiting things out but they go for the life stealer okay yeah. And this time I like it because you already have the nix up this is already one potential carrier like vendetta into in fast Bomb, definitely something that could really work out nicely. Then again, I mean, total aggression. They also been pretty fast in uh, stomping like some some nice sentries there, and the Knicks getting caught out whatsoever. But this time, 
we see different heroes by Total Aggression 2 already, like the Venomancer and the Invoker. That's pretty interesting. So we see a completely new draft up by them. Well, they have gone for the Venomancer at least for two games. So I'm guessing we're going to see the Mirana again as well. But yeah. I mean, it's not 100%. It might get banned out as well. But the Venomancer is decent enough against the Life Dealer because the Venom Scale even slows through the Rage. Yeah, and actually the Moonlight Shadow had quite some impact on the last game. Like, it saved up to three or four deaths there for them. Like, each and everything. Like, TCN couldn't answer fast enough with either Dust or Sentry. So the, the Moonlight Shadow really did quite some work there. Yeah, it most certainly did. Well, looking at the bans now at hand, the Batrider got banned out by Total Aggression with Center War on there being taken out by TCN. So Total Aggression, they just want to take out the Initiation heroes as well as heroes that could carry the Lifestealer. So the Puck is the second ban by them. Yep. But TCN, I mean, if they ban out a hero now, they have the possibility to go for the Storm Spirit still if they want to. At the moment, the Venomancer isn't too scary for a Storm Spirit to handle because there's no certain stuns coming out, only the slows, which the Storm Spirit doesn't care too much about. So, yep. so far, wouldn't be too bad of a pickup. Yep, I, I wouldn't mind seeing another carrier for the Nakes being picked up, like the Storm, for example. I mean, the puck is already out, so this is not an option anymore, but the Storm would be still in for the next pick, so they save up their mid against the Invoker. A Storm can prevail against the Invoker if he's well played, and yeah, as I said, the initiation with the Lifestealer inside of him, that would definitely give TCN a small advantage there. Yeah, but it looks like, I mean, I think TCN are actually considering an X ban. I mean, it's not... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, I mean, it wouldn't be that bad because Turtle Aggression eventually always goes for the Axe. Sometimes the last pick, sometimes somewhere in the second pick rotation. And I don't know, all the games we casted by Total Aggression, the axe always worked out. So it's it's not a bad decision to go for it. But they go for the Mirana instead. Also not a bad pick, as we already said, the Mirana had quite some impact last game. Yeah, it's just taking out one of the heroes that Total Aggression is most comfortable with. So hoping that that way they can influence the draft enough to put Total Aggression out of their comfort zone and for TCN to just get the advantage in the game. Yep, but now I, I'm pretty impressed how like they're struggling with the draft at the moment. It's a Bane. Okay, so we have a Fiend script already in play, but I need more synergy for the Nightmare actually. I want to see something getting into the Nightmare. Nightmare setup, Nyx, Impale, Stun, Synergy, BOOM! <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's one possibility, but I don't know, it's definitely not... I don't know, well, it's, as far, it's not as, far as funny as... to see as like ba Nightmare into Arrow, for example. Yeah, but that combo is already out of the question, so... Yeah. I mean, the Bane Nightmare is decent enough if you want to kill an offlaner who is really far back, you just Nightmare him up, buy enough time for the life stealer to get close as well, to get the open wounds going, so it's, I think this Nightmare won't be like the key spell for him even. I think they're just going for the Fiend script more or less. Yep, and the Fiend script, I mean, it's definitely a strong spell for whatever like TA wants to go for. And I, I really like it that both teams, they're almost done with their entire overtime already at the second pick duration. So it's like... Wow. And it's an Aegis Prophet. Long time no see. Eventually he gets through. And yeah, there we see it. Venomancer push potential, Nature's Prophet push potential. So I like it already. Yeah, this Nature's Prophet, I mean, we really haven't seen him all that much lately, but he's just such an annoying hero to play up against. And TCN, they don't have any counter push at the moment. Like, the impale from the Nyx Assassin is the only thing for counter push. Yep, pretty much so. They have to think about what they do against this. Like, if there's tons of Venom Wards coming out by a slow siege, the Nature's Prophet, every 30 seconds, coming up with a new set of little trains, like nagging on your tower. Okay, there is some counter push potential coming in with the Shadow Fiend. Then again, Shadow Fiend, he also needs quite some babysitting. Uh, against this setup, he definitely needs to go for a BKB rush, which is pretty standard, I guess, on the Shadow Fiend. Either way. But yeah, at least he has the ability to push out some stuff and push it away from the tower. So, 
I like the Shadow Fiend pickup for sure. Yeah, it's not too bad. I'm just always when I see a Shadow Fiend picked up, it's sure he can pick up loads of farm. He can destroy everybody, but then again, he can just get picked off himself at the start. Yep. On and on and on and just have zero impact. So it will come down to the early to mid game how well the Shadow Fiend will actually do. But I like it that TCN decides to go this time for uh, two cores because so far, like all, I don't know, in, in both the games, we like of both the last games, they actually played a single core and it never really worked out. Also, the game before in the quarterfinals of Power Rangers, they both played just a single core. It just did not work out because the core was just not getting too much impact. Or he had some impact, but then the team around him was falling apart. This time, TCN, they have the chance if they get it late later and they don't fall apart as in like the push coming out by a crash and being successful then yeah this definitely could work out yeah it most definitely could and last bands now from total aggression is the gen actually so yeah, I mean it wouldn't have Bieber. been too bad actually the gen able to keep the shadow fiend alive by sending him home or just the hand of god as well, just giving them some pushing power, which TCN, they lack so heavily at the moment. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, I don't know, what's what's coming out for Total Aggression as the last pick? That's what I'm curious about. I mean, for, for TCN, there will be another support coming out, something maybe even with the capability of jungling. But what's coming out for Total Aggression? Do they go for a core or do they even go for more push? I think they're gonna go for a core probably, but which one it will be? Maybe the Faceless Void, although it's not too heavy synergy within their team at the moment. But carry-wise, I mean, picking off the Shadow Fiend or the Life Dealer in the Chronosphere would be really good for them. Yeah, definitely. It, but I don't know. I don't. I don't see it coming. There's not too much synergy unless we have Exhort Invoker. Then maybe Viper. Maybe slowing down the Life Stealer with his ultimate. Getting the kills. Option. Yeah, it would be at least something against the life stealer and with the Arcanum spam, maybe even against the Shadow Fiend. Especially if you get the slow up before the BKP, then you remain slowed. But yeah, they <coughs> take quite their time. And yeah, I'm really curious to see this. Do they go for a core or for even more push? Because more push, of course, then we, we talk about, I don't know, a 20, 25, maximum 30 minutes time window till they get their pushing strategy through. Oh, troll. Hold on. It's okay. a troll. <laughs> it's a troll. We're gonna see a troll. This this is pretty amazing. I like it. I haven't seen him in ages. I think we casted one troll yeah, we did. this week. One troll. I got no idea which team played it though, like zero idea. Yeah, it's 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 been a while, but it was we had one this week. But I don't ask me about the results whatsoever. Anyway, we hop in game. We go for a fast introduction again. I go again for TCN. We have, this time we have We on the Nyx. Freezer again on the Disruptor. Leon is playing the, the Nyx, heading towards the safe lane. Arise is going to be in mid, this time on the Shadow Fiend. And already heading pretty fast to probably plant the ward. Is Sisu on the Bane? And for total aggression on the dire side, currently having a 1 0 advantage in this best of 3 is Etko on the Troll Warlord leaving FMP to play the Rubik and the stand-in Kircho on the Venomancer. Once again, oh no, not once again, Boako is in the mid lane on the Invoker with Faylets playing the safe lane Nature's Prophet. So swapping up the lanes and yep. player combinations a little bit. I like how they swap around lanes. It's, it's I don't know, it's, it's pretty interesting to see that like different players take different roles here I don't know, it's, I like Total Aggression overall, like, not just because they are aggressive and they stick to their team name, but like, yeah, there's so many different drafts coming out, pushing, then they, they always play the Axe, I mean, this game obviously not, but I don't know, I, they, it's, it's a very fresh approach towards Dota 2, and it's really fun to cast them, and I don't know, for the sake of the tournament, usually, of course, I want to give TCN simply... Of course, I don't know, how can I say this without being, like, sounding biased? Of course I want to see TCN performing well, everything, but, like, this really fresh approach to Dota 2 by Total Aggression, I would like to see them playing, actually, the finals. 
And now that being said, please viewers don't hate me. I am absolutely unbiased when it comes to both teams. I just enjoy the draft of TA a tiny bit more. Well, I mean, it's always nice to see new stuff, but TCN, I mean, hoping for the sake of just viewership or good, good sport, whatnot, whatever, man. <laughs> it's always <laughs> nice to see the third game of the best of three. Yeah, not that, that of course, like, there's nothing better than a best of three, and we actually play three games. The same with the best of fives, even though... Like, if they actually go in three games and the, the other game is following as well, like Goomba versus uh, Power Rangers, then it's going to be a very long evening. But it's fine with me. I'm here. I'm ready. Fun to cast. Why did they pause again? Oh, he just asked for 30 seconds, like, two minutes ago. Yeah, got to love them pauses. And <laughs> go has been given by a rise, so things should get underway. Or nope. Failets is failing. <laughs> Yep, he's on the phone, but we can talk already about one ward, it's the standard ward, the Bane was rushing here just to get this ward out, and now he went back into mid, he does not have any more wards, the second one is on a disruptor, and it's probably going to be one to give vision to the rune, I guess, at least, because so far none of the wards is actually covering the runes, this ward is just a protective ward for the offline. So, yeah, I think go. TCN definitely will want to have some rune vision, and yeah, yes, yeah. they get this from this observer or But the aggressive tri lane, they have two sentries, and I think this observer is gonna get sentried rather soon. Yep, I think we might see that right away. There is the first observer is coming out. Oh, <laughs> it's just a block, more or less. Yep, but yeah, the they hell? use the sentry. It's not enough to get the observer, but it's definitely blocking the camp. And, yep, yeah, well, nothing else so far coming out. Bane having quite a little head start with a haste rune. And what is the setup here? Like, who is going top? Ah, the Nakes, the Disruptor now. Did they just all over swap? Yeah, now that Nyx they Assassin was on the top at the start, but once they saw the tri lane, they sent the Nyx there. I don't know why. I guess the Life Stealer wouldn't have gotten too much farm otherwise. And we will just probably play it safe, be under his own tower and try to get any XP that he possibly can. Yep, I like the fact that Faelet's got already quite some harass. 50% of his HP pool went down to the Bane, who has the haste rune. Now it's coming in mid. And just, yeah, saying hello to the invoker, that's pretty much all he does. Like, the important thing about the mid lane is that the Shadow Fiend, as usual, gets his souls up. He already got two souls, so if the invoker doesn't get the denies out very fast then yeah the Shadow Fiend will not have any problem and now that the Bane is present in mid the Rubik is swapping as well so quite some s lane swapping coming around here like the entire tri lane gets abandoned just to make it a dual lane at the moment the mid looks like a dual lane and yeah I don't know the Nyx now being alone against another dual lane here Venomancer and the Troll of course yeah, it's once again like in the first game we saw really fast reactions coming out by Total Aggression as well with the lane swaps. So they know exactly what they actually need to do to make their lineup work and they're not willing to hesitate to do it. So really nice reactions there and the mid lane though I do have to say this pain helped arise out so much just with the enfeeble on the invoker. The invoker had like 23 damage actually at some point so even though the shadow pin starts off low it's still higher than 23. Yeah, and so far he's he's doing quite well. He's 7 and 3, the Invoker only 3 and 1, so he got his souls now almost maxed. This is 12 souls, he's currently at 10. And on top of that, the Bane is not just given the Enfeeble, he's also stacking the side cam. So we definitely have some like some flash farming coming out by the Shadow Fiend pretty soon, and this is exactly what he needs. In the meantime, well, the Troll Warlock is going for some harass on the next Assassin, but that's pretty oh, much okay, it. Oh, Faelet comes in as well, the Sprout does get used, but they are going under the tower, the right clicks are coming in, Venom Scale was already used, so it missed, but Edco might go down the tower, he's giving away the right clicks, there's the stun as well, one more tower hit, he will there go down. There's the first blood. That was too much greed. Absolutely too much greed. The Venomancer had still three seconds on the Gale, and the gate was also four mana short, so miscommunication hashtag question mark. I don't know. Like he actually thought there is after the sprout a second slow coming out. 
Oh, yeah, now the Bane uh, with the double damage saying hello to the Invoker again. So Shadow Fiend being absolutely happy. Also with the Life Stealer in the offlane here. 16 and 2. The Nature's Prophet. I don't know, where's the. Oh, yeah, he just rotated the top. So he's level 3, which is actually a surprise that he got quite some levels there. But still, it's looking good for TCN at the moment. Even despite the first blood, they do quite well on each and every lane. Well, they got themselves the first spot, so of course they're doing well, but oh, Kercho runs into Wii, he has the Venom skill, he hits it as well, but the right clicks coming out actually do quite a lot of damage by Wii, he still has to spike her up as if he really wants to go for it, but now Edgar coming in on the troll just as a bouncer. <laughs> bouncer, yeah, driving him out there, but yeah, the Nyx is doing well, I mean, he's he's getting level 4 pretty soon on his offlane, and it wor it's working quite well. And in mid, the Invoker still 16 8 on the Shadow Fiend versus 7 and 2. So Shadow Fiend dominating the mid lane at the moment, and the Naix is on top of the CS in the dual lane with the Disruptor. And it's not getting. No, he's not getting stopped at all. It's just a Rubik. Nothing he can do there. The Rubik even has to stay back, barely getting any level except they reach the tower. There is already a level 2 Klimt, so even if the Rubik runs away, the Open Wounds is on level 1, and I guess he will go for more open wounds there. There's the Bane rotation. If he gets the Nightmare on the Rubik, they might actually be able to get him. Yeah, together with the Glimpse, they definitely have the possibility to just get a completely random kill almost. Oh, but mid lane, there's the Cold Snap onto a right. The Sprout coming out as well. The Shadow Fiend eats his way out of her. He has the regen bottled up at the tree and scouting things. He uses the bottle though and does survive at the moment. Yep, so he... I don't know, the Nature's Prophet trying to be early aggressive, I mean, it, it's they stick to the name Total Aggression, but at the moment the Total Aggression does not find anything, so being aggressive is one thing, being successfully aggressive is the other thing, so... But oh, there's another Sprout, again. Cold Snap already got used, the races are coming out, will he get the counter kill the tower? Does damage, but the last race didn't quite come out, but though the kill is there, nevertheless pain, going on failets now, but doesn't use the Nightmare. And now actually levels 2 on into the brain tab. Yep, not bad. So the Shadow Fiend eventually dies there, but still the Invoker dying there as well. The only small advantage they have is that like the Shadow Fiend didn't, didn't get the experience, but after all he gets the gold for the Invoker kill. So kind of a forefront back and to be honest, it, it felt, you know, too much force there. Like, I don't know. They really tried so hard to get the Shadow Fiend that they even lose the Invoker, who was already doing quite not so successful overall in, in the mid so and now Shadow Fiend comes back and it's just farming up with the races the already stacked side camps and this is gonna be oh is this already a triple stack yeah we already see a triple stack here in the mid and this is now gonna be a quadruple stack and the Shadow Fiend is gonna be so happy about it he's also heading towards the rune but no luck the rune spawns on top and in that oh, time oh with the courier snipe going on by Felix as well one more right click he will get it as well Oh, but he has, now he has a TP now, but nobody will answer. He can just TP out, or he can even walk out, oh, but... Bane and Freezer, oh. they're coming in though. I think there's no way for him to TP. He uses the tree ends, but he blocks himself in. There's the kinetic field as well. He's gonna go down. One more brain up. Yes, they get it. Yeah, and in the same time, the troll eventually getting the kill on the next assassin there. And now, the troll ultimate just came out. He's level 6 after the kill, and they get... Yeah, the Venomance actually gets the last hit, but it does matter, at least someone gets the last hit, just for the sake of more gold. So Nyx going down, and Nature's Prophet going down at the same time. We have 3-2 on the kill score. So far it looks pretty interesting. Nyx now needs just two creeps, and he's level 6. Yep, one more creep and he's level 6, so he could have escaped if he was already level 6. Lifesteal in the meantime, he gets the last hit on the top tier 1. So, yep, the first tier 1s are down. And, I don't know, TA getting now a bit more speed in their game. I still don't understand why the Nature's Prophet didn't TP out directly, but... Oh, yeah. we slowed down once again on the bottom lane. Gets the Impale on the Venomizer, but there's the TP in by Faelet. But the Vendetta can be still used if he wants to go for it. He's, he's buying time and he's not using it. He's just dying. What? Yeah. Why? No, because the Nature's Prophet has dust. So if he would have used the Vendetta, he would have been even additionally well, slowed. At least make him use the 90 gold. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like he, he completely failed at the moment. He did absolutely nothing. I mean, total aggression, they can just go push now. They didn't lose anything from that kill, like anything at all. Yep. So but Pretty Sure is there. 
With the level 3 glimpse as well, if the Bane is coming in, I mean the Shadow Fiend might want to come in as well, he's just trying to stack at the moment, but... Look at the damage coming out though. Well, the Bane has been found by the Rubik, but nothing's happening here, but yeah. These play quads and of course the siege engine which is kept alive simply for the fact that there are so many trees and play quads. They do so much damage on the tower. Tornado mid lane onto the bane. Will there be another stun? Yes there is. There's a cold snap invoker. Gets the easy kill. Okay. So TA as I said. They get quite some speed now. There is soon a new wave. Oh but Felix is not. Oh that's, that's interesting. He's TPing up. He didn't spawn creeps for that tower but yeah they didn't need it as well. So, okay, TA coming back into this game and now, yeah, the bottom tower got denied by the Knicks, so at least something for TCN. We have to look at the crafts already with all these towers, just, like, TCN had the advantage, almost 1,000 in gold and 1,500 in experience, but, like, this gold craft will definitely go, yeah, way below. Now it just updated, you can see it, like, it's now 1,000 in favor for TA and it will even climb more. Leon going on FMP you now just using the open wounds and now raging up he is not going for the TP actually. Will he be actually fast enough? He's getting slowed down by the whirling axes. Yeah no. going for the TP is pretty risky when you have a troll because you can get stunned through the rage anyway so yeah running there is, is probably the best choice. Yeah I guess but at least he survived. Oh Whoa. but there is a sentry ward scouting out Mr. Nix. No chance to get the opening there with the Vendetta. And they're going once again, or no, Rubik just running a little bit too, to, towards the top side of the map. Yep. But Baylets, he wants to TP in aggressively behind, but V is on the hunt as well. He just ran past the sentry, they know he's there. They have the dust as well, Baylets, if he pops it, yes they do. There's the Sprout on the Nyx Assassin, the tree has not created yet, they're waiting for the slow. Venom scale does hit as well, and this should be an easy skip, easy kill. The Spike Carapace buying some time, but no teammates are coming to help. <laughs> yeah, like really nice, like, sentry wards, like, each and every sentry ward spotted out the Nyx now, and this is exactly what I said already for the game before, the Nyx always was scouted out, and yeah, now this is really small. Oh, like exactly. Tornado EMP from the background, Freezer might get caught in it, EMP actually doesn't hit him, but it's gonna go down nevertheless, he uses the ultimate as well, they're gonna get the pain, Telekinesis was used, a few right clicks and then Moker double kill for him, V comes in with the Vendetta, they don't have the dust of appearance ready yet, and this troll might go down, or no, V actually backs off, he knew he would have given away his life in return. Yep. He's waiting for some teammates, maybe. There's the right click, Impale as well, a lot of free heroes, but there's the immediate cold snap by Wako. Yeah, I mean, it's, it was a neat, really nice try with the Impale, but unfortunately no massive races by the Shadow Pin or anything of the sort to follow up. Yep, but total aggression, they stick to their name, absolutely aggressive, and exactly what I said at the draft, they stick together. You see always four of them with, of course, the potential that the Nature's Buffet at any point just TPs in. He's also the Dust Carrier, so whenever they are chasing a Nyx, for example, he can come in so he can't go out with a Vendetta. It's pretty nice what they do at the moment. Like, they didn't just get the pickoffs on the Nyx there. They got the tower and some collateral kills as well on TCN. So TCN, even though their two cores are still topping the last hit charts, we have to look in the net worth now as well, they are also ahead in the net worth, but yeah, all the others of TA, they get so much gold just by all the towers that are done, I mean look at the towers, there is only one, two tier 2 towers left, and now they are topping that the entire thing now with going for Roshan, and with the troll ultimate boosting it up, this is yeah going to be a pretty fast Roshan, even without any medallion or whatsoever. Yeah, the troll has his helm of the dominator, so we'll just lifesteal up here. He was quite low when he came in, but thanks to the tree and just tanking things up, he can easily go for the right clicks, and the age is now on the troll. I mean, they're looking pretty decent. Sure, the lifestealer and the shadow fin might become a major issue, but the rise not getting the BKB finished just yet, and until the time that he does, he still can't fight too well. But it's still interesting how like history repeats itself all the time. Like we had the same thing, like TCN starting out quite well, 
in the early game, the laning this time went really well for them because the Naix had farm, the Shadow Fiend had farm, the, the Nyx on like on his solo lane, he didn't die for quite a while, he even got the first blood because the troll was diving too deep, but overall, at some point TA is just, you know, flipping that switch, go with 4 man or 5 man, getting some pickoffs and always a tower as a result of a one fight, and TCN even game two, they don't find the answer for this. They just don't find an answer how to counter that. Because their draft consists of heroes that need more farm to come online. Like the Shadow Fiend so far, he didn't oh, even... Oh, there's the Infest into V. Kercho slows him down though. There's the Dust as well. Will he go down the Infest? Comes out nice and pale as well. But there's the Static Storm. Wako actually going down on the Invoker. We on the run now at Go. He's low, but they're chasing Leon down at the moment. They're gonna get the Nyx Assassin with the pure right clicks. And Troll doesn't care, the Whirling Axe is to slow Leon down. And I think they're gonna get the kill, the Disruption actually came out with the Glimpse. And Leon TPs out successfully. Oh, but he's, yeah, now he's even using Rage in the in the base. Because he still had Armlet on and everything. But it's really nice, once the Troll was Glimpsed back, he was like, okay, Troll is not here, I can't get stunned, so I just get out of where the TP And This time it wasn't too bad, it was a one for one trade after all, and... Well, the Shadow Fiend's getting lasted on the mid tower. But what I wanted to say is so, like, they just don't have an answer to what TA's aggression is coming so early. But, I mean, this time at least, they went at least for something, so a more equal trade. The problem what I see is that, like, with all this tower advantage, even in a draft that is on paper slightly worse. TA is just coming out on top of it because just just look at the net worth and everything like the entire hero setup just follows directly after the Nyx uh, after the Nyx after the Nyx and the Shadow Fiend even the supports and this is the dangerous thing TA always equally distributes all the items and the farm among the team and with that they have such a strong team fight while other teams they just babysit one or two targets their, their cores and you know just protect them four protect one or three protect two and Sometimes it just doesn't work out, but I don't know at the moment the only thing that really keeps me hoping for equal game and some nice fights and a chance for TCN is the fact that Nakes and Shadow Fiend they still manage to get kills They get the farm and this is really dangerous for total aggression Yeah, I think actually TCN even though they have lost their majority of their outer towers I think they're still looking really strong with the tower lasted from Horizon, the Shadow Fiend. He now finishes up the BKB as well, yep. so can easily go fight. The Life Stealer has his armlet finished, so probably can fight as well if they really want to. So, I mean, it's looking pretty decent because at the net worth, both the Life Stealer and the Shadow Fiend are like quite nicely ahead of anybody on Total Aggression. Yeah, also the, the Midas distribution is equally amongst the team. Naix has one and the Furion has one, so there we won't see. Like, usually we have, like, when teams go for Midas gaming, there's like one or two Midas more in one team. Like, even if they trade worse whatsoever, like, the, the XP craft at least is keeping kind of equally just because of that little advantage you get from the Midas, especially if you actually get the Midas up each and every time on really huge creeps that give the maximum amount of XP you can get it out of the Midas but like here it's equally distributed so I don't know at the moment it, it still it still looks equal but then again as I said if you look at the items coming out by TA like even the supports have quite decent uh, items and this is because of all those towers yeah, the early towers do definitely make a difference because otherwise your carries are only farming and your supports are just hurting so bad. Looking for like one creep kill here and there, just begging for the carries to leave some for them. But with the towers, they're getting it anyway. Although the supports on Total Aggression, they don't have too much. Kercho does have the Arcane Boots and the Headdress, so working towards a mech. Whereas the Rubik, just Arcane Boots and nothing pretty much. Yep, nothing else at least. So, I don't know. I just hope this pa pause is pretty much s soon over because this game, I don't know, it, it really tickles to cast this because I have no idea what's happening in the next, I don't know, till 20 minutes. I think TA still has the upper hand with their push potential and everything, but with the Nakes now having the Armlad and the Shadow Fiend just getting his uh, BKB. I think TA is at the point where they have to really care that this game is not suddenly backflipping on them. 
Ooh, there's a gem picked up already by Freezer now. Yep. I guess they want to make the game backflip. <laughs> but it's, it's it's actually a nice gem. Look at the warding coming out by the dire side. We have here a craftsmith jungle ward, even though it dies pretty soon. We have a ward in the mid, and also another ward here in a very nice spot, by the way. I like this spot. It's rarely getting used because it gives vision directly into the river line and everything that happens around the tier 1. And they, yeah, they stomp that ward when it was about a tier 1 fight. So I really like that ward position. It's rarely used, really rarely used. Yeah, it is, but it's a pretty nice observer ward, though. Gives some pretty decent vision. Oh, and, and the courier gets killed <laughs> once again. <laughs> yep. Really nice there, the Furion just hunting that courier each and every time. But it doesn't matter, there was nothing in the courier of any significance. It already well. delivered the PKB to the Shadow Fiend, so nothing they lose there actually. Well, it's like losing one extra tower as far as gold goes towards the side of total aggression, so yeah, they're sure. definitely happy with it. And for another three minutes almost, if Tishen wants to pick up an item, they have to go back to the base. Yep, and I like what they do now, they farm up the enemy jungle and then with the option to ra rotate back into the mid, I mean the ward is spotting out what's happening here, but now with the newly acquired gem, Freezer is actually de-warding. Yeah, and with the de-warding there's one minor issue that, oh, Freezer might get picked off here, there's the tornado, it does miss, but the gold snap EMP will be there, a static storm comes up but misses everything once again and Freezer gonna get wrecked now. He uses the glimpse, there's the requiem of souls, but missing absolutely everybody. Finally, there's a fiend screw control, but it does get cancelled. Nice too many fail by Vido. Arise just right clicking away. There's the static storm, who, which got stolen. It's Lubix. Oh god. Beyond running into the static storm, can't rage up. Finally gets it, but it's too late and he's gonna take the fall. Yep, the Nake's not even using his infest there. But I don't know, a really strange engage on that fight. So the gem goes down, four heroes die. And that all just for the sake of clearing out the ages. I don't know why Freezer tanked it up and also the the Shadow Fiend ultimate went into pretty much nothing. Like just Troll got some peripheral damage there, nothing else. They saw him casting that and he didn't interrupt it, so they were all just going back. And as we know total aggression, it just won a fight, they instantly capitalize on it, they go for the tier two. The obvious choice since nothing TCN can do at the moment against it. They have to fall back to their tier freeze. Yeah, and that's suddenly the mech finished as well for the Venomancer, so they can fight or push even better now thanks to it. And the troll is getting really close to his own PKB. But talking about the last fight, I mean, that was just so sloppy by TCN. Yep. This Disruptor went for a small panic mode. Once he to dodged the tornado, he should have just backed off towards his own team, but no. He just went there, wanted to go man mode, missed the kinetic field static storm combination, had the static storm stolen by the Rubik, and yep. died to give away the gem. It's like, I mean, the stolen static storm did not too much to TCN there, but still, like, it's it's well, it stopped steal. the life stealer from doing anything. The life stealer actually ran in, wanted to go for the Rubik or the supports, but had to go through the static storm. And while he was in the static storm, he couldn't rage. And he actually lost half of his HP while just running around aimlessly. Yep. Either way, it was a really bad fight for TCN. And yep, I was talking about it that like now with the items they got on TCN, like I could see coming like coming back into the game, but they just added another really bad team fight on top of that. So this is again looking bad. Now we are 18 minutes in total aggression. Their absolutely aggressive setup and playstyle works out again. And I don't know, as I said, TCN still has two cores, they're still leading in the network, so there is still a chance, but like, there is no point in having your cores online when you have lost half of your base, and at the moment, if they go for such fights, the next time they lose such a fight, they have to use buybacks, and if Total Aggression repeats it, they can just go high ground, at least for a tier 3, so step by step everything's going down here, and we see, yeah, TA is going 5 man already, and this gonna result in either a fight or a high crown push for them. Yeah, I think they're just trying to make sure that TCN has actually no safe place to farm up. They're taking care of the Radiant Jungle on their own, pushing the lane in as well. But Leon trying to go for the tier 2 in the mid lane, gets tornadoed up and has to rage away because of the EMP. 
But TA, are they waiting for next Roche actually before they try to go high ground or maybe some next items? It, I don't know, if if they wait for Roche just for an attack, that would be like place we see, I don't know, just coming out by Team Liquid for example, you know? Like they don't do anything the entire game till, I don't know, the Aegis is up again on them for example, like total aggression. They usually don't care. Like Roshan was so far in each and each of their games, just a bonus. You know, when we have the ages, we fight. But if we don't have it, it's just fine. We fight either way. Oh, Nature's Prophet! Wow! Oh, thank God he cancelled it. I thought he wants to go one versus three, but he has the Necro Book level three now. PKB finished on Ed Coast Troll Warlord. So I think they have most of the items that they need to break high ground. But then again, they cannot be caught by the Disruptor, because if they do, there will be the Requiem of Souls, and this time, or that time, it will hit as well. So they have to be careful still, they don't want to give their lead away. But if they wait too long, it might backfire. Yeah, what I like the most is like, or which was the most horrible thing about the last fight, is that the newly acquired gem goes to TA and now you see again on the map like there is pretty much zero map control for TCN except for where they are with their heroes they just don't have anything else coming up and now yeah we see like massive trains and necrobooks pushing already to tier 3 at the moment it's more a feed than anything else but yeah anytime one of the TCN heroes is down or they lost the team fight these units will do so much damage it definitely will the necro 3 is just such a nice pushing item, man. We're asking for it, by the way. Roshan yeah. is up, they go instantly in, and I think, yeah, that is pretty much the wake up call for TA. I do have to say, they got a really lucky Roche respawn timer. It was like 8 minutes and 15 to 30 seconds or so, so one of the smallest possible times, actually. But it's lucky for them because now they can go for the push. They don't have to wait it out, I think they should feel confident enough with the Aegis on the throat. Yeah, it's it's definitely not playing in the hands of TCN. And now oh, the tornado is there as well, but the rage comes out before. Yeah, rage saving him there. Like at the moment Nyx is do they go for infest there? No, but now they they saw the nades, so they just grabbed the illusion rune and then what is their plan? Like now they have Yeah, the I think Aegis. they want the last tier two tower on top. I guess. They do it really oh, systematically. Oh, we on the hunt. As this is out, they're gonna get caught though. Ruby comes in from the low ground. There's the impale with the brain zap. Oh god, he just got blown up. The cold snap comes out with the EMP. But the spike carapace is there to stop it any further. Or is there Edco? Wants to chase nice sprout onto Wee's snake. Nick's assassin is out of mana. Does get nightmared up to buy some time, but goes down to the invoker nevertheless. So yeah, a one for one trade after all. Like the, the aggressive play by Nature's Prophet paying off. Now he's just TPing back to stop that push, but as I said, he can come back anytime and they have just enough to get the tower. Like the Necro units at the moment tanking it up. Does he micro them? No, he does not micro them, so the melee creep actually dies. The cliff is coming out, but I don't think they can stop this. This tower is just dead. Yeah, I think so too, man. They might not go for another one at the moment because the Necro 3 just got used. Paylet's defending the tier 1 tower on the bottom lane as well. In 45 seconds or so, with the Necro coming off cooldown, they're gonna go for the kill, and until that time, they're just hunting, maybe to get a pick off or two. And by the way, the, the gem now on the Invoker. <laughs> yeah, he's had it like almost since they won the fight, I think. He's the most likely hero to actually get away if he gets caught solo while dewarding. Yeah, true. Now it's also like him like having the opening on the Nyx when he sees him in the Vendetta. It's like either him or the Rubik pretty much. Those two are the one who need the gem because they can disable Nyx before he actually successfully opens with the Vendetta. But now I think TCN tries to go for Nature's Prophet but all he was interested in is like pushing out the creep wave and that's pretty much it. So TA at the moment they are grouping up. This looks like bottom push is imminent, pretty much. Yeah, I think they're gonna go and shoo should as well go for it, because... I mean, what to them if they wait? I mean, sure, Invoker working towards the Sheep Stick, so... Maybe that's an item to look forward, but Shadowfin in the meantime, sitting on the Yasha with the BKB, 1, 4.1k in the bank. 
and bash her on the life stealer with 2.1k. Oh, they find Bayless. There's the Bale. The right click's coming out as well. The Nature Prophet actually falls, but the tier 3 tower already dropping so low. Troll out it was there. And there's the BKB by a rise, but they're not fighting, and that's a waste of the BKB. I mean, Shadow Fiend, he doesn't have it now anymore if Total Aggression are gonna go in. The Treants do get created. He has the Necro Book as well if he really wants to. The Impale was there already, and the tier 3 is gonna take a fall. So Troll getting some gold for it and he's going with the ranged mode onto the melee racks. Just with the extra attack with nice double man gale. He gets him bailed up on the Venomancer. Should go down and will as well, but Leon is slowed. Nice static storm catches Poirco on the invoker. There's the fiend script. Leon still alive but will fall down. He has to buy back. Arise, cold snapped up. Will he go down a few more right clicks? No, he survives, my god. But buyback coming out by Leon and the melee racks so far still standing, but... Finally, gonna take a fall. It's. I mean, they got two kills. TCN, but they lost the melee racks, which is yeah. all that matters. And the kill before an HS Prophet was kind of costly for TA, but like he did exactly what he had to do. He was just going back. But now he's on the hunt, but he won't get anything. Well, he's still. Oh, actually. Yeah, if he gets the open he wounds, he's getting closer, but oh, nice slow by the whirling access. But he's still giving chase fail at <laughs> oh god. You know the basher is there, so he has to sprout. Oh, but they find me at oh, BKB, right clicks out. There's the bash coming out by Leon, but he's not winning the map fight. Mech as well, Kircho. He uses the infest for the time being, but Ciso going down to Rubik with a stolen brains up, killing the bane off. And oh, will there be a sprout? Oh my they know this lifestyle is infested. Yeah. They're just chasing the creep wave. <laughs> Like, it's nothing he can do, but he will have rage ready and everything by the time this creep's dying. Even though now it's like the first creep heading there, but no, it's not even a creep on that attack, so... The, the lifestyle is sort of... Oh, safe. he come not over and on to Payless, but there's the static storm coming out. Can Leon escape now? Yeah, he should be able to. Nice connective field, holding them in place for the timing, but Kircher still wants to chase Glimpse back. Does hit the Venom scale or no? Never mind me, Arise is the focus of target. He's gonna go down to a few more right clicks. Yes, he does go down. V comes in with a two man in play. Will they get the counter kill? Doesn't look like it. The Freezer is about to fall. Nice four step going out. Ciso is gonna go down as well. And I think the GG might get called rather soon. Yep, just the team fight of TH is so much stronger. Not by the fall or by trap, just the way they play together. It all chains up and I don't know. Oh, three man impaled by V, just buying some time, but no follow up, of course. Spike Carapest used as well. Echo almost takes a fall as Leon going to town on the Invoker. Actually, might get the kill. No, there's the Ghost Walk, and Leon has to back off. He's slowed down by the Poison Sting. EMP hits as well. Oh, oh Nature's Prophet ultimate the and the Poison Sting. By the Venomancer. And that's pretty much it. Like, looking at uh, buyback status. Invoker. Rubik and Venomance are the only ones with buyback and there it comes, the GG is called. TA wins against TCN in two games and absolutely convincingly. Like TCN, a decent draft, nice laning stage, like to be honest the game is not really representing what happened in the laning stage. Like it was, I don't know, they did really did well, like they're pretty much till the last tower even, their cores were still high in farm and everything but they just couldn't answer to TA's team fight. The te team fight is just so much better of TA. Anyway, TA, total aggression. The team is in the final. So, the second game of the semifinals will start now. It will be Power Rangers versus the German team Goomba. And depending on who wins there, this will be the next enemy for total aggression. Unfortunately, TCN is out, which was one of the Romanian teams. So, it's kind of disappointing for all the Romanian viewers out there. But don't worry. They definitely did very well getting here into the semi-finals. So just hang in there guys. Just a bit music. And then we go into the next semi